In the previous video, we saw the statement of Van Kampen's theorem, which allows you to compute fundamental groups of spaces by breaking them up into smaller, simpler spaces. And we saw a bunch of examples finishing with this example of the two-dimensional torus, which gave us this fundamental group, two generators and one relation. Now the two-dimensional torus has a cell structure that we've already seen in which there is one zero cell, which is basically the, the vertex of the square. There are four vertices, of course, but they all get identified down to one vertex when you make the opposite sides identified. Uh, and then there are two one cells, A and B. This is a circle, right? It goes from this point back to the same point after the identification is made. This is also a circle. And lo and behold, in our presentation, there are two generators, one for each one cell. Then there's a two cell, which is this square, the square itself, the interior. And lo and behold, there's one relation which corresponds to that two cell. So this is an instance of a more general fact, um, which I'm going to prove now, which says that if X is a cell complex, let's say CW complex, and just for simplicity, I'm going to say it's got one zero cell. You can phrase this in terms of, you know, if there are many zero cells, it doesn't matter, but it's just easy to state if there's only one zero cell, like in this example, then pi one of X has a presentation uh, where the generators are the cells, the one cells, and the relations come from the two cells. So I'm going to write it schematically like this, and then I'll say what do I really mean. What I mean here is there is one generator for each one cell. And what do I mean here? Well, I mean there is one relation for each two cell, and I need to tell you what that relation is. So what is the relation? Well, given a two cell, um, if you follow its boundary around, then you get a loop inside the one skeleton because remember the two cells, their boundary has to attach to the one skeleton, the thing made out of the one cells. So following its boundary, gives, yields a loop in the one skeleton which we can now write as a, a word in the one cells just like we did for the torus Okay, we said A, B, A inverse, B inverse. That was what we got by following the boundary of the two cell. So um, let's call this boundary of E, if E is the two cell. So then the relation is boundary of E is the identity. Now clearly that holds, right? So clearly that relation should hold in the fundamental group because 
the boundary of E is a loop which is contractible because you can contract that loop over the interior of the, the two cell E. So certainly this relation holds and the claim is those are the only relations you need. Note that this theorem is about cell complexes of any dimension. In other words, if you want to know the fundamental group, you don't care about the three cells, the four cells, any of the other cells, just the one cells that give you generators and the two cells that give you these relations. So how do we prove this? Well, let's start by looking at the one skeleton. So X1 is the one skeleton. In other words, the union of the one cells. Well, then X1 is obtained by attaching one cells to a point. So it's just a wedge of circles. Shall write like this. Um, so this wedge is supposed to be taken over however many one cells there are. Could be infinitely many one cells. Now, applying Van Kampen's theorem, we've already seen that the wedge of two circles gives you the free group on two generators. So it should be no surprise that by induction, you know, pi one, uh, sorry, this is x1, the one skeleton, pi one of the one skeleton is the free group on however many generators you need, however many one cells there are. Which I'm going to write like this. Remember, z star z is our notation for the free group on two generators. This is the amalgamated product notation, but with no subscript. That means we're not amalgamating over anything. It's just a free product. So here I'm saying you take the free product of as many copies of Z as you need. So this is by induction using Van Kampen. We've already basically seen this. Um, and that gives you your generators, right? So then um, we need to figure out what happens when we attach a two cell. So to deal with the two cells, what I need to prove is that if Y is some space, and um, Z is obtained from Y by attaching a two cell, say E, then pi 1 of Z is the result of quotienting pi 1 of Y by the normal subgroup generated by the loop, which is the boundary of E. So I'll write that as N D E. Is the normal subgroup generated by the loop, which is the boundary of the two cell, as we defined up here. So the point here is that just if I take the subgroup generated by this loop, then it's not necessarily a normal subgroup, so I might not be able to quotient by it. So if I really want to impose the relation that that loop is the identity, I need to divide out by the whole normal subgroup generated by that element. When I say normal subgroup generated by it, I mean the smallest normal subgroup containing that element. And this fact basically follows from Van Kampen's theorem. So I'm going to think of Z as U union V, 
where u is the interior of the two cell and v is the space y union uh, let me say e minus the origin hopefully it's clear what i mean in other words we've got the space y whatever it is we're attaching a two cell to y so u is going to be the two cell the interior of the two cell and v is going to be everything except this one point let's say the not the north pole of the disk it doesn't make sense but you know it's just one point cut out of the disk which i'm going to call zero now u intersect v you can see in this picture it's going to be the interior of the cell minus that one point and you can see that's homotopy equivalent to a circle u itself is contractible because it's just a disk and v is homotopy equivalent to y because i could just move down these lines and retract that blue region back onto y so van kampen's theorem tells me that pi 1 of z is the amalgamated product uh, of pi 1 y with the trivial group which is pi 1 of u amalgamated over this uh, copy of z which comes from pi 1 of the intersection what does that mean it means i take the generators and relations of pi 1 y i add nothing generators and relations of the trivial group and then i add an extra amalgamated relation which is going to be exactly the thing that says the boundary of this two cell is contractible in z so the new amalgamated relation Is exactly this one that we wanted and that's the only one we have to add by van kampen's theorem by van kampen's theorem saying these are the generation relations of z you take the generation relations of y and you add an extra relation which is this amalgamated relation so that shows exactly what we wanted it shows that the generators of x of pi 1 of x come from the one skeleton the uh, relations come from the two cells and i guess what we still need to show is that adding higher dimensional cells doesn't affect the fundamental group now again that follows from van kampen's theorem so let's just rather than writing anything else let's revisit this argument we've just given for two cells and see what happens if we replace this two with an n that's strictly bigger than two so then we still have a decomposition of the space z by we get by attaching a three cell four cell um, as two pieces u and v where u is the interior of the cell and v is everything except one point on the cell but now van kampen's theorem says pi one of z is pi one of y star trivial group and the intersection now is basically the boundary of the n cell which is an n minus one sphere instead of a one dimensional sphere and that's simply connected so we don't have to add any more relations so we just get pi one y and nothing has changed So the proof shows adding two cells gives you a relation adding three four five cells doesn't change anything and that's what we wanted to prove
this is powerful this gives you a way of computing pi 1 for any CW complex.